we're going to give you tonight a, a, a little gift. Um, every sermon that I preach here, it is put in a one-page devotional. It is posted on social media. It is posted by Calvary Chapel. It is posted on the RTO website. But this one in particular, I thought it was good for you guys to have and to make copies and give it to people. It's about two things. It's about how do we love and why do we love? And it is the non-negotiable number five. So you, you're going to see it all here. It's just one page. So we thought it would be good for you to have. So we make copies for you to read as a devotional and to encourage you. And to remind you about one thing. This is just a little appetizer. Okay. Because we have to rehearse the gospel every single hour. Jesus Christ came to die. Why did he come to die? He came to die to shed sinless, precious blood. Why? So we will be able to die to self. In other words, Jesus Christ came to show us the way to obedience. And his way to obedience is to love his father. Jesus came because he was secure in his father's love. And therefore, if that is true, that means that we are dying to self so we can love as Jesus loves. And how do we love? I'm going to talk about that tonight by being fervent in spirit. By being fervent in spirit. And the way that we become fervent in spirit is by being able to love others as we love ourselves. Because we are hungry for the joy. For the joy that was before me, I endure the cross, you see. So the more that you love, the more joy you're going to receive. And therefore, we must become hungry for that joy. And we have to fight for our joy. And the way that we become hungry and we fight for the joy is by being able to love God and love our neighbors. It's a double whammy. But to remember that Christ came to die, so he came to purchase our obedience. So because of his death and his blood, God the Father will make us obedient. We are not naturally obedient people. We are the opposite. We are rebellious people. You see what I'm saying? But we pray radically because we need God to make us obedient. Prayer make, make you what you are not. Do we get that? So this little devotional is going to help you. And we have over 70 devotionals or more on the RT website that Jim so kindly puts there for us every, every week actually. So we have a lady on our team that that's all that she does for, for me. And she is a professional. I mean, she, I mean, she takes 15 pages and put it into one page. It's just an amazing gift that she has. And she becomes me in one page. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Amen. Thank you again to the Savanok family. Wasn't that food good tonight, huh? 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 Pray, pray that I will be able to go to Minnesota to see Eugene. I saw him uh, four or five times when he was at the county jail in Minneapolis. But now that he's in the big house, it has not been easy. But we're praying for a way for me to get into that maximum security prison. So I called the chaplain already, we talked, and just happened that that week that we talked, an officer got killed. So when that happens, <laughs> everything shuts down, you know what I'm saying? So I just need to get there and see my friend Eugene. I love Eugene, he's my, 
I'm actually, he is an RTO missionary in that prison in Minnesota. Amen. So anyway, well, welcome everybody again. Hallelujah. Here's our title for tonight. It's on the screen. And I want to thank tonight. I want to thank Heather because she puts all these lights together for me. So thank you, uh, Heather. I, I do not thank you enough, but thank you. Thank you. And of course, Papi, Papi at the sound, and everybody that helps here, Mike and Monica, and my new friend, Bill, and so many of you who, who, who help out. We are so thankful that you help out. So, so here's our title for tonight. Fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. Non-negotiable of freedom for Christians, number seven. Christians are not wimps. We are not wimps. We are filled with the Spirit. We are fervent in the Spirit. Let me show you something. This is a soda can. Diet Coke. Listen. Give me the mic. Put the mic right next to this, Bobby. I want him to listen to this. Is that mic on? Test. Yeah. Okay, stay right next to me, Bobby. Hear this. <laughs> See? Whenever you are open before people, they have to hear a... They have to hear a fervency. This can has, has fervency in it. If I put this, if I put this soda in this glass, you see the foam, right? Coming up, right? You have to be bubbling. That's the fervency in you. Now, I'm going to leave this here. Right there. And by the end of the, of the message, now, if I drink this right now, it, it will taste pretty good. Mmm. Yeah. I taste the fervency. I taste the, 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 the bubbling of it. The, the bubbling of it. But if I let it sit for a while, it becomes flat. It becomes flat. We don't want to be flat. We want to be fervent. You get the point? So here's once again, in a minute, Romans 12, 1 through 2. These two verses are critical, they are urgent, they are vital, they are essential to experience internal permanent transformation in each of us to prove that our Father's will is good. It's good. It's perfect and acceptable to God the Father. So as fervent in a spirit Christians, we will be able to obey without delay and with joy, and with joy, the practical will of displaying with consistent, credible commitment and integrity our Father's fervent love. Love. His love is fervent. Found in verses 9 to 13 from where we have been extracting the 13 non-negotiables of freedom for Christians. You see, a lack of fervency in spirit will not only hinder our obedience, but most importantly will hinder our freedom. Our freedom. Take a careful listen to Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God remember Christians are molded by what by mercy Christians are molded by mercy and not by the culture nor the ways of the world here is Romans 12 not through 13 these 13 commandments are not for negotiation we cannot make a deal with God nor for a compromise they are for Christians to obey without delay in the fervency of the Spirit. Number one, verse nine, let love be without hypocrisy. Number two, abhor what is evil. Number three, cling to what is good. Number four, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Number five, in honor giving preference to one another. Number six, not lagging in diligence. Number seven, tonight we're going to deal with that fervent in spirit number eight serving the Lord number nine rejoicing in hope number ten patient in tribulation eleven continuing steadfastly in prayer distributing to the needs of the saints and number thirteen given to hospitality so tonight we are dealing with non-negotiable number seven fervent in spirit Romans 12 11b so as a Christian we have received from the Father it's a gift come from the Father the permanent gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us as winners we win we are not losers matter of fact we don't know how to lose anymore because now we are winners with permanent and increasing fervency permanent and increasing fervency fervent means having or display a passionate intensity deeply heartfelt with sincerity animated animated hot burning or glowing in the Greek fervent means to boil to boil the water has to be boiling for you to put the egg in there if you want to have a hard boiled egg the water has to be boiling if you want to have corn on the cob to put it in there right to be boiling in other words Rio muy caliente that's a Spanish right there. That's a, a Spanglish. That's Cuban, Puerto Rican, and English mixed together. Muy caliente that burns, that burns, that burns in our spirit and sets our hearts with flames of fire, of fire that will make us arise and go, Joshua, igniting a permanent fire that cannot be extinguished transferable to others with the spirit of life that dwells within us as Christians that will no longer let us be passive Christians are not passive people no lukewarm no cold ever again say it with me ever again ever again we will never be passive ever again we are fervent in spirit Take a listen to Luke 24 with my friend Greg. Made a little reference to it today. Take a listen to Luke 24 starting in verse 30. To help us see that when anyone, anyone is confronted by the resurrected Jesus, the bread of life, the incarnate word, he or she becomes fervent in spirit say it with me fervent in spirit say it fervent in spirit amen regardless of your culture regardless of your upbringing I don't care if you German or Dutch or Cuban or Puerto Rican or part of the frozen chosen I don't care when you are transformed by Jesus you become fervent that's a sign of your conversion 
Now it came to pass, as he, Jesus, sat at the table with them, with the disciples, that he, Jesus, took the bread, he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. How intimately, forever, we don't come into Christ and then get out. No, when you in, you in. You are all in. And he vanished, that's, that's Jesus, from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? While he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told, told about the thing that, they, that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. You see, beloved, a real church. That is the question that we've been dealing now for 40 years. What is the church? I, I believe I'm going to give you a radical definition here, a biblical one of what the church must look like. And as you know, the church is us. Is Christians coming together we are the body of Christ right here it is the church the real church is a house of prayer fervent in spirit empowered by the unlimited resurrecting power of Jesus Christ fully committed to biblical truth molded by mercy driven by grace and engaged in loving radically who Anyone God the Father sends their way, our way, regardless of what they have done or where they come from. Embracing them with intentionality and creativity. Isaiah 56, 7 and 8, which includes the prisoner, that's my calling, and their families. Very important, that's why we have RTO. So how does a fervent in a spirit Christian and church look like in a biblical practical way? Number one, they as individuals and as a church must be, according to scripture number one, fully committed to loving people without hypocrisy. That's the reason why Paul wrote Romans 12. With a hypocrisy, with aggressive fervency, aggressive fervency. When I opened this can, the fervency was contained in the can. And when I opened it, you felt it. You heard it. It came out. People, when they meet you, they have to see that fervency in you. When people meet you, they have to see that you are a fervent in the spirit Christian, that you are not flat no more, that you are the real deal. When they meet you, they have to see Christ in you immediately because now you have the fervency of the spirit of God living within you, ready to come out at any moment. So number one, you need to become, a church must become, a Christian must become fully committed to loving people with a hypocrisy, with aggressive fervency and creativity across culture, color, class, crisis and crime to prove that our love for God the Father is genuine. And you see, and you see the scriptures there next to the number one. Number two. They are fully committed to loving people in the fervent tension of truth and grace. And you see the scripture there, John 1, 14 through 18. Number three, they are fully committed to loving the least. The least. With the most fervency. With the least of resources. You see the, the text there, Matthew 25, 35 through 47. Number four, they are fully committed to enter the sufferings of others by tabernacling with them with their fervent spirit. You see the scripture there, John 1, 9 through 14. Number five, they are fully committed to pray for others with a radical, biblical, vibrant, 
fervent prayer in the Spirit. Take a listen to Jesus' fervent prayer in the Spirit in Luke 10. Just before he was about to show them the practical gospel through the parable of the Good Samaritan. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes, that's to us. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered. Say with me, all things. All things. All things have been delivered to me by my father, Jesus said. And remember, he's your older brother. And no one knows who the son is except the father. And who the father is except the son. And the one, this is, I talked about what last week, about what election, right? Here it is. If you believe in free will, this, this text, you cannot deal with it. Because you've been chosen. Here it is. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. You cannot make him do it. No, 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 no. He's the one. He's the one that's going to choose whoever he wants to. And reveal it to him. That goes about, that, that goes against whatever free will doctrine you believe in. Because we've been chosen, the Bible says. Then he, Jesus, turned to his disciples and said privately. He not just everybody, just his disciples. In a, in, a, in, a, in a little meeting just with them. Private meeting. He said, blessed are the eyes we see the things you see. And I tell you, there are many prophets, many educated people, many PhDs and THDs and all kinds of degrees. The prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. And to hear what you hear, I have not heard it. Luke 10, 21 through 24. The next revival in America is not going to come to the churches in the street. It's going to come to the prisons in America. The church behind bars. That's the church. The babes with no education. God loves to choose those people, right? Greg, he just loves to choose those people. Here's what Jan Wesley said, which is so applicable and fits perfectly to what it means to love fervent in the spirit. Take a listen. This is Jan Wesley, I quote. Do all the good you can. By all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. That includes prisons and jails, to the prisoners and their families at RTO and beyond. Hallelujah. People have become very passive, indifferent, superficial, artificial, and flat. But this time, this soda is becoming flooded because it's just sitting there. And many of us are just sitting there. We need to be actively engaged so the fervency we keep growing in us, you see. Amen. Because we have become accustomed in the last 40 years to playing games and being entertained. So this evil attitude has penetrated the church and it has deepened his ugly roots to the point that people, even people that go to church, change their minds by the second. They are not being taught nor shown about the deep biblical truth of the scriptures. It is very hard today. I was just telling this to my wife this morning. It is so hard today to know who the real person really is. It's hard to trust, isn't it? 
So it is so hard to trust people because they have no clue of what it means to be fervent in spirit. Hence, we are taking tonight a radical time out to make sure we become people that will live and love fervent in spirit. Our passivity, lack of commitment, and laziness prevents us from engaging with an active fervent spirit in risky ministry. In risky ministry with a justifiable outrage. We need to be justifiably outraged of what is going on in our society today, especially inside our churches. That will bring about the necessary transformation. You see, everywhere I go, I see that people in church and out of church want to do the least for the most. And hence, entitlement, comfort, and entertainment has become the norm. It is what they talk about on their focus. Just listen to five or six Christians when they come together and see what they talk about. Just get engaged in that talk just for a few minutes. It is what they talk about and their focus, wanting a Jesus as a fortune teller that will follow them and take the monkey from their backs so they can do what they want and feel like it. That is not the attitude of a Christian. Let me begin to close with a personal story. Most of you may have heard of TV 38 that was many years ago, or TLN, which God our Father used Bob Wilson's friend, Mr. Gary Rose, to pioneer. Gary and I became good friends, and he even served on our advisory board for many years. And I never forget what he told me many years ago. We stuck with me. He said, Manny, when I go to church, I get bored. This is a leader that was the head president of the National Broadcasting Association. This is a man who has been in church for years and years. He said, Manny, I go to church and I get bored. Many people are bored. That's why RTO. So he says to me, money that needs to be changed. Beloved, people are either bored or just entertained to death in our churches. People have become accustomed to an artificial, flat, passive gospel that focuses on self and not in Christ and his kingdom, no, on the Christ that is coming back for a bride that is passionately focused on the groom and fervent in spirit. The Apostle Paul is saying to us tonight, in closing, He's, he's saying, be fervent in spirit. He's saying, burn with passion, with the biblical gospel, and for the gospel with an explosive commitment to a radical, agonizing, relentless prayer life, driven and compelled by the Father's love, always believing for, the God, for God the Father to do the impossible in us, to keep changing us. Because we are an impossible being to be changed. We cannot change ourselves. That will hallow his holy name in greater ways to ignite in us an uncontrollable, unquenching, Holy Spirit type, type fire. With fresh faith in Christ that will drive us to become a radical, obedient, and consistent. Risk it all. Risk it all. That's what God did. He risked it all. Credible Christ agent of change change and mercy, G getting in the game, getting dirty, and showing the real Jesus as winners, becoming real, never fakers, no superficial, all in. Finally, listen to the Apostle Paul, and feel, and feel what a fervent in spirit type of life produces in a true Christian. And let's make this text right here a final prayer tonight. Listen to the Apostle Paul from Second um, Corinthians 4, 7 through 12. Listen to him. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. 
that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. That is a fervent in spirit prayer. May that be what you want to become. A fervent in spirit, all out, all in Christian. Remember, Christians are not wimps. We are filled with the spirit.